Hello, this is the second lesson of the introduction to the Big Data Applications and Analytics course. And in this short lesson, we'll just give some very general remarks about the course. Um, so many of these have been said already. This is alternatively called X Informatics, but uh, in more modern terminology, it's Big Data Applications and Analytics. And it's an overview course for the data science curriculum at Indiana University. It's motivated by applications, but mixes in a reasonable discussion of technologies. Note that this is not a, that does not have any tremendously detailed use of technologies. We do some Python, use of Python, but a very modest knowledge of Python is required. Um, other than that, we actually discuss technologies, but we do not uh, try to teach you them. And these are the technologies, which are the technologies of the big data revolution, which are needed to support the f any given field X electronically. And we have this rallying cry, which are now already sort of probably uh, learned. We're using clouds, we're running data analytics, we're doing a collaborative delivery, we're processing big data. And we're solving problems in X informatics. In the technology area, we go through parallel computing, clouds, and some aspects of data analytics, such as visualization and clustering. And the X informatics describe various applications and their data. There is some discussion of software, and uh, you can take this course either using Python or Java, where Python probably provides the most elegant interface, because we're not doing any large-scale computing. <coughs> so the key features of Java aren't particularly used. You can run it on future systems, uh, or else on um, your own local laptop. You can run it on Amazon and Azure, but this is such a simple class. These issues aren't very, um, very serious. Uh, if you run on future systems, then uh, you would use um, OpenStack to do this. So the course is set up as a MOOC with uh, around 33 units, where these units are 30 to 90 minutes of instructions, and they're chopped up into sections which are connected units, such that like the physics unit has four, physics section has four units in it. Uh, this introduction has two units in it. This uh, uh, this particular um, unit we're going through here, and then a motivation unit. Um, when I teach a given course, I will choose um, a subset of the units. You will not, I don't tend to, as we have 30 hours, that's more than, more than we really need for a full semester course. And I choose, uh, I don't know, something like 80, 85% of the total. Uh, the MOOC, which is self-paced, is really up to you what you look at. Um, the, this uh, particular introduction is followed by the motivation unit, which describes why this course is addressing an important issue. As I've mentioned, every unit is broken up into lessons, because you're meant to fall asleep after 15 minutes. So rather than uh, talking uh, for a long time, we stop after five to 15 minutes, a convenient uh, dividing points, and then continue. So you can have your cup of coffee or, or exercise and then uh, move on. And I, the homework and the mentoring are separate from the lessons, and the um, uh, and in fact use totally different technology. They either use the um, community group for the MOOC with the uh, lessons set on the community group, and also probably internally uh, depicted in the MOOC. And whereas, however, for the graded version of the of the um, Class, the uh, homework is set through Indiana University Learning Management System. I've already pointed out that we have a mix of Java and Python, and uh, they have some ways you can view those as separate tracks. Although most of it is built around the Python lectures, because the Java just is somewhat different code. The actual logical structure is better understood in Python. The mechanics of uh, software define, define what I call side MOOCs, like what is Python and things like that. And there are lots of lists of useful resources, which are largely websites, which are given on a, um, 
has links attached to the lectures. Um, all interactions in the class are done through Google community groups, uh, which are used as forums. We, there are Google community groups allows you to define categories where you lay, which you use to label your, your postings. Uh, I will, uh, as the instructor, set a preset as a whole set of categories. And those categories will fall into two types uh, for the MOOC. One is the uh, homework discussion categories, and the other is sort of inspirational categories to discuss cosmic issues. The graded version just has the inspirational categories, plus a general catch all for students who find nifty things on the web they'd like to tell you about, or nifty things in the world. Um, I say the graded course just use these forums to post useful comments and discuss topics. And your grade, your grade will actually depend on what you post and what you comment, because I'll count, see how many times you do that. Um, the MOOC uh, uses the forums both in this fashion, and as I say, to also uh, discuss homeworks, which are posed one per category on the community group. Note the MOOC is totally asynchronous and there's no time synchronization. The, um, Graded courses are pretty async. They're also somewhat asynchronous, but they, uh, the nature of the returning homeworks in an ordered fashion and the necessar necessity to finish the course in, by the end of the semester implies some need for some synchronizations. And I will tell you which videos to watch in what week. And they will, the videos are not necessarily assigned in order because I may decide that uh, on a given year it's better to change the order. And as I mentioned, homeworks, because they're so sensitive and you have to show your, that we're not doing some insecure MOOC, which is giving away uh, birth rights. We use the very solid Indiana University learning management infrastructure. Uh, this is the last slide of this um, global introduction, which actually goes through all the units. Uh, which is effectively the same thing as going through the topics which are discussed in this course on big data, applications, and analytics. So here we are, introduction. That's, we're in lesson two of this uh, one unit, this five lesson in this unit. Then we go to the motivation, which is a longer presentation, which is my standard um, general introduction to clouds and big data. Then we have the Formal start of the course with the introduction. What is big data? What is data analytics? What is X informatics? And that's a that's sort of related to the motivation, but uh, done in a more systematic fashion as a appropriate for this class. After that, we have a two what we call side MOOCs. They're, they're not different in any logical fashion. They're just um, how to use. Um, to how to use technology with one on Python and one on using the backend cloud, which is not necessary. You can do everything you want on your laptop, and that's described separately for Java and Python. Then there is a uh, section which is um, on uh, X informatics, where I give you the value of X. Here it's the, the if essentially physics, in particular the discovery of the Higgs particle and related work in analyzing data from the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. Uh, this has, uh, the things in red are the sort of software pieces. This has some software on event-based uh, data analysis, histograms and models, basic statistics. And this is nicely done in Python and uh, you can also do it in Java if you want. Um, after that, we have three units on a NIST-sponsored uh, big data use case study. And the advantage of that is it has uh, 51 different use cases, and so we can really get a broad understanding of the breadth of data. That has a side MOOC following, which is uh, not for that particular uh, section, these three units from one section, it is for, for Software called PlotViz, which is for displaying point distributions in three dimensions. And we'll use that when we do things like clustering, so you can see what actually is happening. Uh, then we have uh, another, so here we have our first application, physics. 
X, I mean, physics, informatics, E physics. Now we have e-commerce and what I call lifestyle, because uh, it's the technologies that you use every day when you use Netflix and things like that. And it's uh, recommender engines and things like that. We have some, so discusses Netflix and uh, and and uh, Amazon and uh, considerations like that. I say I said that is a key technology here, recommender systems and the K nearest neighbor algorithm. And we also do another important classification algorithm, clustering, and a general discussion of heuristic methods, which are which are permeate this whole field. After that, we have a, a different section with a unit on parallel computing. This is a, largely a, a very um, general introduction to parallel computing, showing how broadly useful it is. Then we go to a little more detail on cloud computing and its application to big data applications and analytics, the topic of this course. Uh, that's a, a single section here. Now we have another section on uh, web search and text mining, information retrieval and their technologies. And then we have the technologies, which are the um, k-means, which is a clustering algorithm done in Python and Java. We have an important technology, MapReduce, which is key to doing uh, a lot of big data analysis, a brilliant invention of uh, Jeffrey Dean at Google. And then we uh, actually show how to combine these two to do a k-means with MapReduce in a very simple fashion. And then we do another application, PageRank, which is famous because it was the, you know, the critical innovation that made Google a dominant uh, company. And then the uh, course ends with uh, four different values of x, sports, which is in some of my classes the most popular. That's why I offer it, although I situate it here, I actually offer it early in the class. Health, sensors, and remote sensing and uh, radar analysis. So it's, uh, that's what you have in this class. You will learn a bit about technology, a bit about lots of applications, and why big data is critically important. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoy the course, and uh, you can always ask me questions via the community group or via email. I'm gcf at indiana.edu. Thank you very much. That's the end of this um, uh, lesson. <laughs>